Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Let me show you what I made today. There's the mama monkey and the baby monkey. <laughs> Those are really fun to make and they're all hand sewn. So you can do it at home even if you don't have a sewing machine. Everything you need you can get from the dollar store or um, around your house. Lots of fun to make and they give you some good skills too. So let me show you how I made those. To make your own sock monkey, you're going to need a pair of socks. Usually it's a pair of work socks. Traditionally would have a red stripe there. Those ones you would find in the men's department. These ones I found in the women's department. But whatever kind of work sock you find, you want to make sure that it has white at the heel and white at the toe because those are important parts of the monkey. You're also gonna need a pipe cleaner for the tail. Embroidery thread just for the nose, the two little nostrils. I like to use two different widths of ribbon, a real skinny one for the mouth and then a bigger one to tie around the neck. Two buttons for the eyes and then for thread, I like to use a white one when I'm sewing the white, a gray one when I'm sewing the gray, and it is important to use one that matches the ribbon that you're gonna use for the mouth. You're also gonna need some pins and a pair of scissors. Regular needle, and then the last thing you're gonna need is some stuffing. And my favorite place to get stuffing is from Old Pillows. Rip it open and use the stuffing. And using the exact same steps that I'm showing you here now, I made this adorable baby sock monkey out of a little pair of baby socks. The first thing we're going to do is pick one sock and we're going to turn that sock inside out. And then you lay it down here with the heel of the sock up like that. And with that centered, we want to put a line of pins right in between what's going to be the monkey's legs. So we're going to come from about here, about let's say five eighths of an inch up from the bottom here, starting here, coming around up making a V there right at the heel of the sock and then coming right back down and curving around there. So I'm gonna be sewing this one by hand. Normally, honestly, I do do it on a sewing machine. If you're doing this on a machine, you would start right there, coming this way, back tack, and then you would make your nice two curves, kind of coming around like that, and then all the way up and then a pivot here. You wanna sink your needle right down there and then come down and around. I've got about two arms lengths of the gray thread. Take your two cut ends together and then we're gonna wrap it around your finger, take it off, and then we're gonna put that tail through, not just once, but twice to make a good size knot. So there's through once and then through a second time. Push that whole knot down and then cut off the thread that comes after the knot. Make sure your thread is even on the needle. So as I say, we're going to be starting right about here. I'm going to show you the back stitch. I just made a regular stitch in and out, and now I'm coming back. Coming out past where my thread was coming out before. Coming back and out past where my thread was coming out before. If you aren't comfortable visualizing a curve there, you could very lightly with a pencil, or if you have any kind of marking chalk, you could draw yourself a little line there. You don't want to do anything too dark because it could show through afterwards. Don't forget to blend it right into the side here, but not to the pin. It comes up about a quarter inch away from the pin. So the back stitch is a little bit tighter than a running stitch. And because this knit, we're gonna be cutting this, I don't want it to kind of all run and open up and have holes in our monkey. So I think if you're doing this by hand, a back stitch is a good way to go. Notice I'm never drawing the needle out the back here. I'm just always going in, in and out of the front. Now that I'm around that curve, I'm just gonna go straight up and I can follow the lines of the knit now, so that makes it a little bit easier. I don't really have to visualize a straight line all the way up. I can just follow the lines of the knit. 
Okay, I'm going to start angling my way in to make that V right at the heel of the sock. Good, so that'll be my pivot point right there. I'm going to come to that V again and then turn and come down. Now my thread is getting a little bit short and there is just no point in struggling with a short thread. So tie off. Anytime you're hand sewing and you want to tie a knot, you're going to make one last little stitch and as you pull your thread, you see that loop form there? Don't let that loop get twisted up. Put your needle back through that loop, pull it tight, and do that again. Little tiny stitch, put your needle back through the loop, and pull that tight. I like to put, make one more stitch before I stitch my thread, just to have a little space between my knot and the, where the thread gets cut. So there's one leg done. I'm going to re-thread my needle. All right, I'm just going to start again where I was with a regular stitch and then back. And now I started right from the top of the V and now I'm angling my way back out to come down the leg in the same, the same distance away from the pin that I went up. Okay, the two legs are sewn. You're gonna cut right up in between the two legs and you're gonna snip pretty close to your V, but not so close that you end up with a hole. Close enough to the V that the legs can move separately. You're probably wondering, how am I gonna turn this right side out? Because there's no hole. Well, we have to make a hole. And the, the hole we're gonna make is gonna be covered by the muzzle. The muzzle's gonna sit right here. This is the back. Right, so now this is the front. That muzzle is going to sit right here. So it's about a finger width below where the white turns to gray. Right there. We're going to pinch that and pull that apart from the back. Right, make sure that you've got this right because I have had students cut a hole in a weird place and then you've got a weird gaping hole where you don't want one. So. Can you see now, this is kind of like his side view. This is going to be his face. And then the finger width, width down from that white line, I'm going to do a snip. And it's not that big. It's maybe half an inch, a centimeter and a bit. Because when you open it out, it stretches. And we can turn the whole sock right side out through that. Pull the legs out. You notice that I didn't trim off around those curves because it's all going to get stuffed. It actually helps to have that bit of extra in there. If you see right at the base of his bum here, if it looks puckery, that's because you didn't cut close enough to the V. You might need to go back in and cut a little bit more. It should look smooth at the top of his legs. So this is the back. This is the front. He does not look cute yet of that gaping hole but don't worry that's going to get covered by the muzzle we're going to stuff this so here's some of our pillow stuffing it works out better with stuffing if you don't take a massive handful at a time just take a little bit and we're going to start by shoving that right down all the way to his toes and you'll just keep stuffing him until he's not too fat not too skinny We won't be able to add any more stuffing later. Once the muzzle is on, this will all be closed up. So kind of pack it into the body a bit, right up into the head. So right now, that is a face that only a mother could love. We're gonna just do a running stitch around this gaping hole. So running stitch is just in, out, in, out. 
in and out and in and out and this is not going to show so this does not have to look that good we want to draw that hole closed a bit and just do a couple stitches up and down just to draw that hole together but as i say it's not going to show yeah, that is sock number one done that's all we do with sock number one good let's go to sock number two On this sock, there is a pretty helpful line right there. And I'm going to be cutting halfway between that line and the white line. You want to leave a little centimeter or half an inch around the white. You do not want to cut right on that line because we need a little bit of seam allowance to turn that around. Also, I'm going to stick a pin through here because sometimes, yeah, okay. The side I'm looking at is the bigger side, right? If I did this side, I'd be cutting in a little too close here. You see that? Okay. So this is the bigger side. So I'm safe on this side. I'm going to cut straight across just about a quarter inch from that line where the knit chain is. Okay. So that's going to be the two arms. On this side, I just want to get that muzzle cut out. So the same quarter inch or so away from the weight of the muzzle. There's his muzzle. Perfect. And then the lower half here, half is going to be the tail. I can kind of fold this in half like that. And right from the tip of the toe right through, I'm going to cut this piece in half. Good. So this longer one can be the tail. And then this last little bit here. This is going to be our two ears, and I want to cut one like that and one like this. So to do that, I think I'll fold this in half. Before I put these down, because they're just going to curl up, I'm going to put them right sides together. So those two are going right sides together. And let's pin that. And these two can go right sides together. And I'll pin that. Good. Now, the piece that's left for the arms, I'm just going to cut on one fold here and on the other fold there. So I know I have two even arms. And now we'll take the arms inside out. And this is going to be sewing this exactly the same way that we sewed the two legs. Around that curve like that and up. We want our line to blend right into the folded edge, come down close to the bottom curve there, and then come up this side a little, like about a quarter inch away from the edge. Okay, so it's going to be the same kind of line that we sewed on the legs. And you'd come into it this way on the machine again. You'd start with your back tack right here and come around. And if you're doing it by hand, it's a back stitch again. exactly the same way. Turn it inside out with a few pins. Now if you want you can make the tail skinnier so you could come skinnier like that and this time also we're not going around a curve we're just going to follow the point there. So starting at the point with our back stitch. For the ears, we're just going to do a back stitch around the curved edge. The straight edge stays open. The part
parts are all sewn right sides together with a back stitch and now they can all be turned right side out. Let's put all of that aside for now and we're going to do the muzzle. Bring back sock number one. And on this little muzzle, I'm going to fold it right where the line is between the white and the gray. And I'm taking the center and pinning it to this line, this sort of seam in the sock there. And then I'll fold under the gray here and bring that corner right to where that gray and white meet. And pin that. Same on this side, fold it up where the gray and white meet and bring it way over there. Now that seems centered and looks sort of symmetrical, just check that you're happy with that line. So we're not going to worry about the bottom line here first, we're going to sew with white thread in an invisible stitch there and then stuff it and then close the bottom. If I want this stitch to be invisible, I have to start by hiding my knot. I'm putting my needle inside the fold there, coming right out at the very edge of the fold. So my knot is hidden inside, and then my stitches now are going to be small. I'm picking up a little bit of this sock right beside the muzzle, and then going right back into the fold of the muzzle. a little bit of the sock there and then right back into the fold of the muzzle. Little tiny stitches. You can't see the stitch at all. Where people go wrong is if they do a stitch like this. If they do a stitch that's not right at the edge, that's not what we want. That doesn't end up looking very nice. What it is again, pick up a little bit of the sock right back into the edge of the fold. Doing it nicely doesn't really take that much longer, but it does end up just looking so much better. Now that I'm at that corner, I'm gonna just do a little knot just to hold it secure but I'm not gonna cut my thread yet. Now I'm just gonna let the needle hang there and then I'm gonna stuff this and we'll tuck all that in and then we'll complete sewing that on. So we'll stuff the muzzle. It doesn't need a lot, it's just a small area, but it should look kind of symmetrical. Every monkey has its own personality. They're all gonna look a little bit different and sometimes the asymmetry adds to the personality. Good, that's nice. I'll just tuck in that edge and pin that now. And then again, before you start sewing, just check it. Make sure you like the way it's looking. Tying the knot now when you're on the outside of the monkey, here's a little trick. You're going to do your last little stitch just like normal once and again. Okay, one more time through. Okay, now before you cut your thread, here's one little trick. Put your needle into the monkey, pull it out anywhere. Pull your thread tight and then cut your thread. And then that means the little tail of thread is on the inside. I won't show. And now my next step is to stuff the arms. And again, just little small pieces and all the way down to the monkey's fingertips. If we want to have zero waste, we can cut up those scrappy bits into small pieces and use that as stuffing too.
And make sure the two arms are both the same. We are ready to sew the arms on. So you want to find where the seam runs up the side of the arm. And you're going to be turning under a little bit more there and a little bit less on the opposite side. So do you see what I mean? You're making kind of an angle. And this is so that the arm kind of comes out at a natural position there. It's not sticking straight out like that. It'll kind of be like that, okay? And where we want to place it, not too high up, if you wrap your fingers around the monkey's neck, that's where a bow is going to sit. So we want the arm to be below that level and put a few pins. You want all of your raw edges tucked in nicely. So pin and then check it. With the same stitch that we use around the muzzle, we're going to sew all the way around the circle of the arm and try to make a nice smooth line there. Hiding my knot inside the fold of the freight. These are small invisible stitches the same way we did on around the muzzle. If you see little edges poking out, make sure you tuck them in. And the armpit is a point of stress there because this monkey might just get dragged around by the arm. So we want to make sure it's nicely secure at the armpit. There, it's starting to look like a monkey. Okay, next is the tail. We don't stuff the tail, we use a pipe cleaner. To make sure it doesn't poke out the end, we're just gonna curl it up a little bit. Just like that. And put the pipe cleaner in the tail. And then curl up this end too. Just one little curl is enough. And we can give that tail a cute little twist now or a little bend with the pipe cleaner in it. Tuck in all the raw edges and then pin it. And then same invisible stitches all the way around. Oh, awesome, look at that. Oh, that's cute. So now the ears, we want to do a couple things before we sew them on. One is to tuck in that messy looking seam allowance and it's they're so little and finicky, I think it's easiest to sew those seam allowances in. So I've hidden my knot inside there and you can see how finicky this is, right? So I'm going to bring those edges together. I'm overcasting, going, picking up the fold on one side and the fold on the other side. When I get to the end here, I'm not going to tie a knot. I'm just going to work my way back to the middle. Just a couple stitches back to the middle there because what I want to do now is sew a little pleat into the ear. It looks kind of cute when it's like that, just a little pleat. So I'll close it up, fold it in half, and now do that same kind of overcast stitch just from one side to the other. So that looks like a monkey's ear. And now we can tie a knot. I don't really have to cut my thread. I can just worm my way back to one of the corners and now I'm ready to sew it on. To make it look like a monkey, we want to have the ears right on the side of the head, right? It ends up looking kind of funny if the ears are up high. It doesn't it look like some other kind of animal. So on the side is what we're aiming for. But you can put the ears wherever you think looks the cutest. They look funny no matter what. <laughs> I want to do little stitches connecting from the ear to the head. So pick up a little bit of the head and pick up a little bit of the ear. And just to make sure it's secure, let's go all the way around the back too. We're ready to put on the face. So to plan her face, I used pins and took a bunch of pictures so I could compare all the different versions and decide exactly how I wanted the, um, where the nostrils would be, which buttons and where. 
how I wanted the little ribbon to be for her mouth. And then I decided to add little eyebrows. I'm gonna start by sewing on the mouth. Now you can do an embroidered mouth, like I did for the baby monkey, but I kind of like the way the ribbon looks. I think it looks really pretty. The mouth is made out of a piece of 1 8 inch ribbon with the ends turned under. But I don't need so much turned under, so I'm gonna snip off a little bit. It is important to have a little bit turned under though, otherwise you get that little frayed edge at the end of the smile. To sew this on, we want to use really small delicate stitches, and to make the stitches really invisible, we're just going to use a single thread. To tie a knot in a single thread, if I just put that end through once, that knot is going to be so small that it's going to slip right through the knit. So I'm putting it through twice, or even three times. I can hide my knot right inside the fold of the ribbon. I'll catch one little stitch in the sock and then come out in the very edge of the ribbon. With that end sewn down, now I can take out the pin. There's the double layer where the, sock, where the ribbon is folded. So I'm going to tuck that in, pick up the sock right beside the ribbon and then just catch the edge of just the top layer of ribbon. And just catch the top edge of the ribbon. Really tiny invisible stitches. Okay, so there's the cute little smile. I'm happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do is sew on the buttons for the eyes. And for that, when I sew on a button, I like to use a quadruple thread. To do a quadruple thread, I'm just going to pull off about an arm's length. But now I'm going to double that. And now I'm going to quadruple that. Okay, so the two cut ends go into the eye of the needle like that. And then you want to run your fingers down that a couple times to make sure it's all even. Now we'll tie the knot in the same way where I'm going to put that in through once and through twice. Push it all down toward the end and cut off the tail of thread that comes after the knot. So I've got my buttons layered for the eyes. Um, and you don't have to, you can just do a single button, but I do like the fact that monkeys have that lighter area around their eye, I just think it's so adorable. If you can peek under here, I'm going to replace that pin with a little stitch. Because I know that that spot is where I want my buttons to sit. Layering of buttons works best if the bigger button has four holes like this, but if the smaller button only has two holes, I can't find a little small purple button with two holes. When you have the two hole button sitting on the four hole button, it just changes the expression. So what I'm going to do is sew on the big one first. I'll sew an X here, so making a stitch in the same spot underneath. And I'll go through twice that direction. would be fine, right? You could just have the single button. So I tried to anchor this button just to the lower two holes of that one, just to get that offset position a bit. So that's secured on anyway. And now underneath here, I'm just going to tie a little bit of a knot. It doesn't, it's not my final knot. So I'm just making that loop, pulling my needle through. Don't let it get tangly. Good. Now, with that secured, I am going to hop right through to my other eye. Right where that pin is. Then I can take out that pin. And start sewing my eye there. So, I like the eyes to be quite close together for monkeys. It just looks cuter.
For the nostrils and the two little eyebrows, um, I'm going to use a darker purple embroidery thread, about an arm's length of embroidery thread, and then we split it. When you're working with embroidery thread, it comes in six strands. I like to do three and three. And now you really want to make sure you've got a good eye on your needle, because now we're going to get three strands in there. So I'm going to do French knots at those nostrils, but I need to hide my knot. I'm going to come in right at the monkey's chin and then come out where I want the nostril to be. There. So there, now that knot is just never going to be seen down there. So to do a French knot now, we take up a little stitch starting a little bit before where the thread's coming out and bring your needle to where to after where the thread's coming out, like that, okay? Leave the needle sit there. And now you're gonna take your thread and wrap it around the pointy end of the needle. One, two, three, four times, got it? Hold that wrap down while you pull the needle through. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go in there and come out at the next nostril. Oh my gosh, that's cute. Same thing, needle sticks out, wrap four times. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then hold the wrap down, pull your needle through. Okay. And then arrange it nice. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Okay. And now I do want to hide in my last little knot here. Back through the loop. Good. Okay. Now I can go back in. Come out anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Lashes. So I'm hiding my knot in behind the button. I'm going to come out at one pin and try a little eyelash. And then another one at the other pin. Oh, that's quite cute. Okay, we'll do that. And after that third one, I'm gonna find the other side. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. I'm gonna bring my needle out behind the ear. Now I'm gonna tie my little knot. Oh my goodness, look how cute she is. Finishing touch is a length of ribbon. I'm cutting about 22 inches of ribbon. Nice little bow around her lovely neck. Very sophisticated. If you pull a little tight, it gives a bit of definition to her neck. Oh my goodness, she's stunning. Look at the beauty. Neaten up the bow. Oh, I love her. Oh my goodness, I could cry. She's so pretty. Okay, everybody, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for joining me. If you made a sock monkey, and if you enjoyed doing that, and if you learned something, let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get my next video. Until next time, take care.